Uh, my name is Matt Ray. I'm a senior technical evangelist with OpsCode. Uh, we are the company behind Chef, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. Uh, if you have more questions about Chef afterwards, please you know follow up with us at the booth. Um, but you know the the main focus of today's talk is going to be about Chef for OpenStack. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, As you may or may not be aware, uh, deploying OpenStack is uh, not as simple as it should be uh, once you go past one box. You know, um, we all love DevStack, but uh, uh, really you need to be on more than one machine uh, if you're going to be uh, running anything at scale. Um, so I'm here to tell you that Chef makes it easier, of course. You know, that's, that's my pitch on it. Uh, but first I want to talk about the problem space. You know, um, you're, let's say you're a small startup and you have an application, you know, your business is something pretty simple. Uh, you've got your app and it's up on a box and, you know, things are going well, you've, you're starting to iterate over it. Uh, you've gone online, you know, uh, identified a little bit of a bottleneck at the database, so, you know, we're going to move that on to another machine and then we're going to need, you know, two of those, of course, and as, you know, as things get better and better, well, we turn out we need two application servers, and of course, you want a load balancer in front of them, because, you know, uh, you want them to have the same IP. <clears throat> and, you know, things are going to continue to grow uh, and grow and, you know, put in some caching and, and things get better. But all these things are tied together with configuration. You know, all these machines are talking to each other, and they need to know about, you know, uh, what everyone else is doing. I mean, the application sa servers are trying to talk to a database, so they need the caching layer. Um, and of course, maybe you don't want to do it that way. Uh, every infrastructure is kind of a unique snowflake. I mean, you can stamp these things out, but I can tell you that you know, uh, HP's OpenStack does not look like Rackspace's OpenStack you know, behind the scenes. So everyone's infrastructure is a unique snowflake. You know, servers, they're pretty much interchangeable, but infrastructure, it's, it's pretty unique. And as you start to grow and evolve and scale, you know, you're going to change out parts. Maybe, you know, MySQL is not working out for you. Postgres is where you want to be. This is introduce some NoSQL to your stack. Well, you know, things are going to continue to change. And as you s continue to gather success, you're going to want to move into multiple data centers. So you're going to have to recreate what you have that you've carefully curated in data center one into two and three. And, you know, and with all this complexity uh, and success, you know, your infrastructure is going to continue to evolve and change. You know, machines come and go. That's great, right? Um, go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> but that's all great and all, but you really want to hear about Chef, of course. So as your infrastructure changes, uh, you're going to need to capture those, those changes. So Chef is built on the idea of infrastructure as code. This is a, a pretty central concept uh, for kind of the, the big DevOps movement. Maybe you've heard about it. But it's, it's based on the idea that everything you do to your servers is captured in source, co source code. And because it's source code, you treat it like source code. You commit it to a, a version control system, you know, like Git or Subversion or something like that. You make versions of it. You tag it. You branch it. You patch it, you know, just like any other code base. And the idea behind this is be, the reason you want to do this is you can reconstruct your business from source control and, and backups and you know, access to new bare metal uh, resources, you know, and data center two, data center three, or a different cloud. You know, so as you need to move your infrastructure around, you can do that because you know how everything works together. So in Chef, Chef follows a, a, a client server model. Uh, we call our client, uh, the clients are on nodes. So it, uh, the Chef client runs on a node, it generates the configuration for that node, it asks the Chef server, hey, what am I supposed to do? And the server says, you are a Nova API, you know, you are a Hadoop worker, you are, you know, you're going to do this, and the server goes, configures itself, sets up all the right software, and then it's going to push its information back to the server. It says, hey, I'm all configured here, uh, you know, Nova API ready for business, and, you know, uh, everything's looking good. And this is all backed in version control, of course. And so that node is an abstraction of a server, and the things that you do on that node is you work with resources. Resources are abstractions of things that system administrators do, you know, whether it's installing packages or writing config files or creating users and directories and managing your networking. Those are things that sysadmins do. Chef has resources to represent those. 
Now, these resources are just an abstraction away from what the actual underlying uh, implementation is. You know, Chef is, is giving you a declarative interface to your resources. You're saying, I want this package installed. You're not saying, apt get install dash y Apache 2. You know, you're just saying, put it on this box. So when you move package Apache 2 to Red Hat, it just works, you know, because there's a yum provider. There. And so underneath the resource are providers that do the dirty work. You know, there's a yum, an apt, uh, you know, dpackage, whatever, uh, that are going to, you know, implement what you want. But what this allows you to do is define the policy you want to implement. You know, you want these servers to talk to each other. You don't care about the details. So you, you're, you know, declaring how they work together. So you gather these resources together in recipes. A uh, recipe is just an ordered list of, of the resources in the order and how you want them to be applied. Uh, the exact same order every time, which is nice because you can reason on it. Uh, and you take those recipes and you package them in cookbooks. A cookbook is everything you need to provide a particular service. So an Apache 2 cookbook, a Hadoop cookbook, Nova cookbook, you know, a uh, Horizon cookbook. And they, uh, you abstract out the attributes that you want to change, like the users that, that you're going to have, the directories, the pool size, the, you know, thread count, you know, the things that you may tweak in a particular package, you turn those into attributes, and what this allows is you to reuse these cookbooks for any sort of application. And there's literally hundreds of them on communityopsco.com, like 600 some, you know, uh, as of this morning, um, <coughs> where people are sharing how they implement, how to deploy, you know, just about everything. And so Chef works, uh, Chef is written in Ruby. And rather than have a, a domain specific language for configuring things, we use Ruby. It's a nice programming language. It allows us to do things like assign variables and iterate over loops and calculate things dynamically. Because it's written in Ruby, maybe your recipes might need to configure something by talking to a web service or uh, using some third-party library that's already written in Ruby, where you have all that flexibility and power available to your configuration management system. You're not limited to what you can do. And because uh, all this information that we've gathered on the nodes has been pushed up to the server, the server exposes it for search. And so we can use that search uh, to tie our machines together. I don't have to have a spreadsheet in advance that says, you know, my SQL database on port, you know, on IP address this, 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 talks to this guy. I just say, my SQL database is up, and so when I need to have another machine talk to it, it asks the, the chef server, I want to search for the nodes. I want, you know, I want their web servers. Uh, this is an example using HAProxy. It's a software load balancer. I'm saying, uh, find me the pool members who are running uh, the web server role. I want to write out my HAProxy config uh, with those guys. It writes out the HAProxy config, so maybe today I have five web servers. Next time this guy runs, you know, maybe we have 15 web servers. It rewrites the config file, restarts the service, and I'm now, I'm now balancing uh, all those applications uh, together. And so when you have an infrastructure that looks like this, and you add another box, you know, those updates can become automatic. And you know, just, just this one extra node is 12 resource changes. You know, that's, that's, not something you want to do by hand because chances are good you're going to mess up. You know, I mean, you're pretty good, but when you do this 100 times, you might mess up. And so Chef allows you to build just about anything, you know, whether it's workstations or clusters or infrastructure as a service. Uh, you know, Chef is going to help you build that, and it helps you automatically reconfigure everything. Uh, we have clients for Linux, Windows, Unix, BSDs. It works great with load balancers, with metrics collections, with monitoring, because those things are dynamic. You know, a new machine comes online, it's automatically monitored, and you know exactly what ports to listen on. You know, you know exactly how to talk to it. And so moving things in and out of clouds becomes trivial because you've abstracted away the underlying infrastructure. So that's great, right? You know, um, but the Chef community is what makes this all happen. You know, Chef is Apache licensed, which is very permissive. Uh, it's what OpenStack itself is licensed under. Uh, it means that we've had over 900 individuals outside of ops code uh, contribute code to Chef. You know, these are you know, people at companies like HP and Dell and Rackspace and VMware, CalZeta, SUSE, people in the room, people you know, out in the halls. They're contributing, they're writing cookbooks, and they're sharing. So how does this all tie back to OpenStack? So we've got a project called Chef for OpenStack. It's a project. It's not a product. You know, key key uh, distinction there. Uh, why? So at the last OpenStack Summit, uh, there were a lot of people, I, I gave a similar talk, and I said, you know, 
HP's doing cool stuff, and Mercado Libre's doing cool stuff, and Rackspace, and Dell, and you know, they're all doing stuff separately. And what the feedback was, was you know, they would really like to collaborate, but it's hard for them to you know, tell their boss, hey, over here at HP, we want to work with Dell. You know, or Rackspace wants to work with Dreamhost. Um, and so we formed a community project. It's called Chef for OpenStack, uh, with the goal of reducing fragmentation and encouraging collaboration. Because deploying OpenStack is not secret sauce. You know, uh, the secret sauce is your business, whether it's you know, fanatical support like Rackspace, or you know, cutting edge uh, infrastructure, um, you know, that, that should be your secret sauce. Getting OpenStack up, please don't make that harder than it already is. You know? um, and everything we do is Apache licensed. Uh, so the what? Uh, it is a chef repository for deploying OpenStack. Uh, this contains all of the, the roles, the attributes, the environments, um, how these things tie together, you know, how, how they work together with chef, uh, with documentation. You know, documentation is very important. Um, you know, like the shout out to Ann Gentle, you know, doing great, great work with Docs Ops Code, uh, Docs OpenStack. Um, it's also cookbooks, you know, a cookbook for Keystone, Glance, Nova, Horizon, Swift, as well as a, a knife plugin uh, for OpenStack. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute. <coughs> uh, the code's all up there. Um, if you go to opscode.com, OpenStack, that's kind of a landing page. It'll have all these URLs for you. Um, we have a mailing list, you know, Google Groups, we have an IRC channel. Um, most of the contributors hang out in IRC. You know, a lot of good conversations happen there. Uh, all this code is up on GitHub, um, so please, you know, go contribute, fork, pull request. You know, it's all great. I uh, hear some of the people who've stood up and said, "Hey, we're working on this." You know, um, a lot of good names up there, uh, and you know, there's a lot of people who aren't on this list that are still contributing. So, you know, there are no barriers to entry. It's Apache license. We're trying to make it it's as easy as possible. Uh, to deploy whatever you need. Um, Rackspace Private Cloud, uh, their Alamo project, it's the same code base. I mean, it's a, a parallel fork. Uh, they have, uh, you know, they're taking it and they're making it easy to install uh, OpenStack. You know, this is a great way to get your feet wet. If you haven't already ch checked it out, you know, uh, please check it out. It was uh, one of the initial sources in the cookbooks based on work that had been done with some other people. Um, and, and so, you know, that is all open source as well. So if you want to go to Rackspace's version, it's there. If you want to go to DreamHost version, it's, it's also up there on OS Ops. Um, you know, so this code is all up there. And they have really great documentation, you know, so whoever did that, thanks. Uh, so what is there currently uh, out there? Uh, Essex is working. You know, we have, uh, we support, um, you know, Fairly uh, smallish installations, you know, maybe less than 100 nodes, uh, because we're we're still kind of uh, stabilizing it before we really start uh, changing out the in underlying pieces. Uh, but it's KVM and Ubuntu 1204. Uh, LXC work has been done by Calzada. Uh, you know, uh, Red Hat work has already been started. Uh, I, I could talk more about that. Uh, we're open to pretty much supporting anything. If if you're, you know, I know there's some SUSE folks around. You know, we'd be happy to support SUSE. It's pretty much if you have a feature you want supported, and your patches don't break everybody else, we'll take them because you know this is a community. It's not nobody's. Uh, you you vote with your feet. You know, you vote with your code. Um, Folsom work has already started. A lot of people have told me, oh yeah, we're just great. You know, or we had to tweak you know two or three little things in Horizon. Um, you know, all, all that's uh, that's coming. Um, and you know, definitely uh, once the Grizzly milestones start up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, people will start jumping on Grizzly before too long. Documentation. Uh, the documentation has been moved into a separate project uh, because we want to provide you know, high level, you know, high quality docs that we can move into docsopenstack.org. Uh, these are in uh, uh, Sphinx and restructured text. And uh, you know, it has, the, the, you know, the nice thing about the documentation is it's backed by examples. So uh, there, I have, uh, <coughs> documentation for how my lab in my office is set up, and there are several people who have recreated it. They're like, oh, I use this network card and this network card. I mean, not even the same models, but just, you know, if I have two NICs and I want to roll out a small lab deployment, I can do it the exact same way. And I can say, oh, you know, that's cool. Here's what, here's what it looks like. Um, you know, and it also, you can tie it back to the Rackspace uh, docs uh, to see, you know, as you start to scale up uh, even more. Um, you know, so what's really important here is that Chef is tying everything together. You know, as you start to grow, 
and scale your deployment. You don't want to have to go and touch another box. You just want to say, hey, another compute node, or hey, we're, you know, we're adding more to the cluster here. Uh, but scaling is going to change how we deploy. And so right now, uh, most of the documentation is around you know, the N plus one model of you know, N compute nodes and one controller. Uh, we're our, we've already, I've already been told that uh, work has been done to move the services onto you know, separate boxes. I'll be looking closely at the HA work uh, that's uh, being documented um, and whatever else people show up with. You know, so whatever is available to us is pretty much what, where it goes. Um, and you know, the licensing is there to make it available to everyone. So let's uh, change it up a little bit. Uh, Knife OpenStack is our, our tool for talking to OpenStack clusters. So we can use Chef to deploy OpenStack, but we can also use Chef to manage anything on top of OpenStack. So Knife is, is the command line tool for Chef. Uh, it is a Swiss Army knife of web APIs. It talks to the Chef server API. It talks to cloud APIs. So I can talk to the OpenStack API, and I can do things like uh, list the flavors, the images, create and delete servers, um, list out the servers, and uh, bootstrap new ones. You know, all the basics, uh, list the flavors, what's available to me. Um, <clears throat> you know, list, list the images that are on my current system. But what's cool is I can say knife OpenStack server create, and from the command line, I can create new instances without having to go into the dashboard and click and say this and this. I can also pass a run list to this. So I can tell it, hey, I want to go to this, this OpenStack API, create me a medium server with, you know, uh, uh, of Ubuntu 1204, and that's gonna be a Hadoop worker. And I could run this, you know, 10 times, I have 10 Hadoop workers, and they're going to use search to find the Hadoop master, and I'm now running a, you know, a 11 node cluster uh, without touching a UI. You know, and this makes it easy to scale. And, you know, I can also say knife OpenStack server delete to reclaim those boxes as I go. So I can start actually using my cloud like you want to use a real cloud. It's not just, hey, I stood something up in the corner. You know, now we can treat it just like everything else. And that machine shows up on the dashboard, of course. You know, that's all pretty. And you can log into it. Um, but that OpenStack plugin looks a lot like the HP plugin. It looks a lot like the Rackspace V2 plugin, you know, because there's a lot of shared code there. Um, those guys are based on OpenStack. But I can also move my infrastructure from OpenStack to EC2 to VMware to Azure to, uh, you know, Google Compute. You know, what Chef allows you, uh, what Chef gives you is infrastructure portability. So I can do, you know, the, the dream of the hybrid cloud can be real. You know, I can have an OpenStack cluster for testing and development and, you know, use the same knife commands, knife EC2 server create to bring up uh, my instances on AWS or on Rackspace or wherever. <clears throat> so what's on the roadmap? Uh, the roadmap is uh, we had a session yesterday afternoon, um, you know, where kind of people identified the things that they're working on. Um, my main focus is, you know, I'm kind of outnumbered. There's a lot more people in the community than just me. Uh, which is a good thing, you know. Uh, I'm essentially the documenter and community manager, and uh, I'm documenting how these things work and trying to get people to succeed with with the code. Uh, we, you know, currently support uh, KVM, uh, but uh, LXC support is in a Calzada branch, and you know we'll be sure to bring that in. A Hyper-V makes uh, really good sense with Chef because Chef uh, treats Windows like a first-class citizen, so you know we have, you know. If, if you're a Windows guy, probably not this crowd, but um, you know everything you want to do on a Windows box, we can do. And Hyper-V makes sense in a mixed uh, cloud because it's cheaper than to run Hyper-V uh, to run Windows VMs on Hyper-V than any other platform because of licensing. So you know if you need to do that, that's a great way to do that because uh, everything else will be on Linux. Uh, database work. Uh, right now it's MySQL. Uh, there are some people who don't like MySQL, and they said, I'm gonna bring in Postgres support, and I said, thanks. <laughs> uh, operating systems, uh, Red Hat 6, of course, uh, is, is you know, coming uh, very soon uh, into the, the, the source base. Um, Debian has packages. If people want uh, Debian support, I'm happy to, to merge and, and add that. Um, SUSE, of course, we're happy to have, you know, whoever shows up is what we're gonna add. Uh, you know, the HA configuration is now documented with Folsom, um, so we will be, you know, going through that uh, to make sure that we have, you know, Pacemaker and Galera working and RabbitMQ working, uh, as well as, you know, 
changing out some of those components for, for other uh, options, whether it's uh, you know, Cupid or uh, ZeroMQ, uh, whatever, whatever OpenStack supports we want to support. You know, if somebody is going to want that in their cloud, uh, and you know, I'm happy to do that. Quantum work has been started. Uh, DreamHost told me that they have uh, done some work to make uh, NYSERA work, but uh, as well as OVF. So you know, there's already a pluggable quantum cookbook uh, that should get merged soon. Um, so if you are if you are a quantum vendor, you know, the framework is there for you to plug in you know your quantum solution into this infrastructure that is getting used by a lot of people. You know, the, for real deployments. Uh, if you are a sender vendor, if you are a you know a storage vendor. Um, you know, uh, the, the DreamHost guys, of course, they're, they're pushing Ceph, but you, know, you could put pretty much any backend in there. Um, and that will be pluggable and, and supportable however we want. Uh, you know, there have been a couple of Chef for OpenStack hack days, you know, where uh, DreamHost hosted one, Rackspace hosted one. Um, there's gonna be one in New York City next month. Uh, essentially, we show up and fix bugs, talk about the code, work on the roadmap. Uh, it's a community thing. Um, I'm trying to get one for Boston and somewhere else beyond, maybe Australia, we'll see. So, <coughs> uh, but Chef for OpenStack is also good for the greater Chef ecosystem. You know, if you're a Chef user and you're not doing OpenStack, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there's a halo effect of, of things that are coming out of the project. Um, you know, the MySQL cookbook has gotten a lot of work. The RabbitMQ cookbook has gotten a lot of work because, you know, people are actually using those things in production environments, and so the cookbooks have to be, you know, capable of supporting all the features that you want. Uh, we have a project called Test Kitchen, uh, open source test framework uh, that you, uh, we use it for testing cookbooks, but it can be used uh, to test anything that's built on top of Vagrant. Uh, and you give it the images that you, the operating systems and the architectures you want to support. So, you know, Ubuntu 10.04 on 32-bit, and it will run sets of tests, tear down the machine, run the next set of tests. Well, one of the nice side effects is somebody's already moving it off of Vagrant to OpenStack. So we'll have, you know, Test Kitchen will have support for OpenStack. So uh, we'll be able to run, you know, probably a lot faster than, uh, than, via, than Vagrant on your desktop. Um, Librarian is a, uh, a Chef community tool for managing your cookbooks. You know, we started using it with Chef for OpenStack, and you know, it's it's been very beneficial. Um, and you know, there's lots of tools in the Chef community that uh, solve that problem. Um, Spice Weasel is uh, another tool that uh, deploys your infrastructure for you. Um, Chef for OpenStack uses it; it manages your roles and environments and everything. Um, you know, the work for Chef for OpenStack. To get it at working with Spice Weasel has made Spice Weasel better and applicable to other use cases. Uh, Pixie Dust is a minimal um, Pixie booting solution. Uh, again, Chef for OpenStack has gotten people, you know, solving weird edge cases with pre-installing OSs before you can run OpenStack on them. So, um, you know, network, network uh, card ordering and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and of course, Knife Rack Space, HP, DreamHost, they all are based off Knife OpenStack. You know, it's a lot of shared code. Um, and so, because those guys are throwing up OpenStack clouds, it's easy to support them immediately with Chef. So if you are a vendor, you know, if you are a infrastructure as a service vendor, and you throw up an OpenStack cloud, it'll get supported really quickly by Chef. And, and I can tell you, your customers will appreciate that. And of course, Dell's Crowbar project. Uh, it's a hardware installer uh, for managing your data center. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of overlap between uh, the work they're doing and what we're working on. So. Too long, didn't listen. Uh, here's, here's what's going on. Opscode.com, OpenStack, it's a project, not a product. Lots of real contributors, uh, Rackspace, Dell, HP, um, you know, DreamHost, uh, AT&T, uh, others. Um, Essex is working, Fulsom's already started. Uh, the features are driven by demand, and we have lots of good documentation and working on examples for each piece. So, uh, any questions? There's somebody in the back. Uh, no, no. So the question is, uh, would I consider Vagrant to be competition with Chef? Um, Vagrant is a uh, a VM test, um, a VM framework for quickly bringing up operating systems and on the desktop and, and tearing them down. Uh, you know, it's very 
you know, we, we worked with uh, Mitchell Hashimoto, the, the Vagrant lead, a lot. You know, we love Vagrant. Um, we use it all over the place. Uh, it's, it's a great way if you're a desktop developer and you have, you know, VirtualBox, it's a great way to get desktop virtualization just quickly cycling through your machines. Um, sh you know, the things that you run on top of that, it's going to be done with Chef. You know, so Vagrant, you know, uses Chef uh, to, to configure the machines that are on it. So you, Vagrant brings them up, Chef puts it on top. Um, so, no, but we, we definitely love Vagrant. So, question. Uh, I know you've been around, you know, as long as probably Puppet has, or pretty close to that, but uh, do you know roughly what your market penetration is? You know, people using Chef versus Puppet, using CF Engine, using uh, you know, <laughs> even, even Juju, which is obviously Sure, well. sure. So, uh, so we, we actually are um, coming up on our fourth birthday. So Puppet's twice as old. Um, Chef was founded by uh, some people who uh, uh, had used Puppet at large scale and, and were running into some of the issues that I talk about, uh, like search and, and, and those sorts of things. Um, and so th there were some just differences in philosophy about how infrastructure should be managed. Uh, as far as market cap, I, I can't really speak to that. Um, as far as OpenStack deployments, uh, you know, there are, uh, I can walk down the hall and, and, you know, point out who's using Chef, uh, and it's a lot of people here. Um, and I, I think, uh, but, you know, if any puppet people are here, they're, they're doing good stuff too. I mean, you know, uh, as long as, uh, like we, we like to say, as long as you're using configuration management, you've already got a leg up on a lot of people. Um, so, uh, it, you know, go to Dan Bodie's talk and ask him. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Is there like a sound or sort of inverse puppet versus chef thing going on? <laughs> yeah, it's still, it's still scary. Yeah, uh, I live in Austin. We don't have, <laughs> you know, so we, we don't, we, yeah, yeah, we, we don't have soccer. Um, or, so, uh, uh, yeah, if, uh, if there are no further questions, uh, you know, please hit me up on uh, email, Twitter, IRC. Um, thanks a lot, you know, uh, stop by the booth.